throwing a mug. The sound on this is going to be recorded with the built-in mic on the camera, so it's not going to be great. Um, I'll see about getting a different mic for future videos, but at the moment this is as good as it's going to get. Um, I throw my mugs with as many grams in clay as I want milliliters capacity. So this is going to be a medium mug, 350 grams of clay, 350 mils capacity. It's a good way of approximating how much clay you're going to need for any size basically. So 250 grams for my 250 mil small mugs and then up to 550 for my 550 mil giant mugs. But if you wanted to make an 800 mil jug, 800 grams of clay is a good starting point. So. I use wooden vats, I wet them first because it just means the clay sticks in the centre a bit better. But my main trick for sticking the clay at the start, take a wet sponge and apply pressure in and down on the outside bottom edge, just there. Once that's smeared onto the bat, it's not going anywhere. Then Centering is just one of those things you've got to practice. Um, there are plenty of fantastic videos showing you how to do it, um, and I've been told I sort of do it the wrong way around anyway, in that I apply pressure with the hands backwards, but that's how I worked out how best to do it when I started. Now I, I'm, I can't unlearn it. The one trick that I find works really well is to prevent s cracks you want to apply pressure with the heel of your hand whichever hand it's going to be um, in at the bottom and really when you're coning in get the pressure right in to the middle because the reason you get s cracks is that the clay isn't aligned and homogenized and properly wedged in together the center part is weak because you haven't applied pressure all the way down there and you can come back and kind of help that out once you've opened the clay and you apply pressure down in the centre with a sponge or with your fingers. So at this stage here you can apply pressure down on the bottom which definitely helps but I found you'll, you can still get S cracks even if you do this you have to really apply quite a lot of pressure to, to avoid them this way but if you cone all the way in, um, you won't get them. So cone in as close to the centre as you can, obviously that changes with bigger balls of clay because you, you, know, you can't do it to the same extent, but for small balls of clay, you know, really, really cone in, make it tall and narrow. Uh, pulling the walls up, again, there are plenty of videos showing you how to do that. I won't go into it too much, but the one thing I do that some other people don't do is I use my thumbnail, dig in at the bottom to make sure I'm not leaving loads of clay smeared onto the bat. It's part of you if you're gonna use a system like I do where you use a set amount of clay for a set size, you really want to know that all that clay is in the piece. So if you leave loads behind and cut it off at the end. Unless you do that consistently, you won't know how much clay is in the piece versus how much you've thrown away. So it's much easier to incorporate all the clay into the piece um, and then you'll know that you know, it's going to be a set size for a set amount of clay. I trim the bottom with a triangle turning tool. I find much better than the knife tool in that they just get they remove the clay for you and they just make it effortless whereas the, the knife tools work but and sometimes the knife tools work better but for most of what I do that's fine. Now I'm gonna make this into a swirly mug so the next stage is to really get the walls wet Slow the wheel right down and then what you're looking for, or what I do, is I've got one finger inside applying pressure out. That's the finger that does the pattern. 
these two fingers support the clay on the outside, either side. They don't push in, they just resist the clay from moving and you apply pressure like that. So if you watch, the clay will bend outwards to start with and then once you get to the right amount of swell, you just move both hands up together, back off the pressure at the top or you'll knock the rim off centre. Once you've evened out the rim, get all the water out of the bottom, that's quite important, you don't want water sat inside your piece, it will ruin the clay, um, speed it back up, makes it easier to neaten up the rim, so even up the rim, and then I use a little strip of plastic taken from one of my clay bags, fold that over the rim and you have a burnished smooth rim. Now what I'll do is take this off, leave it on the bat for the rest of the day, come back this afternoon and I'll neaten it up while it's still on the bat because obviously it's still centred and attached. So there are a lot of things that are easier to do now than they would be if you wire it off. Plus, when you wire it off, it's firm enough that it's not going to distort when you move it. So if you have a schedule that allows it, it's the easiest way. Throw in the morning, process them in the afternoon and leave them to dry slowly overnight before doing anything else. And that's it.